power or spiritualistic ideas and sophistries, shall we keep silent for fear of injuring their influence while souls are being beguiled? Satan will use every advantage that we can obtain to cause souls to become beclouded and perplexed in regard to the work of the church, in regard to the word of God, and in regard to the words of warning which he has given through the testimonies of his spirit, to guard his little flock from the subtleties of the enemy. We need to be wise, we need to be delicate, we need to be faithful, we need to love our brothers and sisters. But sometimes the time comes when you need to say something. You need to say something in love. Sister White says, unless you prepare to die for that brother or sister, you don't have a right to say anything to them. You don't have a right to rebuke them. Only until your heart is right that you're willing to die for that person, are you ready to even say anything to those people. What is our accountability when we fail to reprove wrongs? We are responsible for the evil it produces. Those who have too little courage to reprove... You know, brethren, I, I speak to myself here, it's so hard to have that kind of courage. Then you've got lots of people going one way, and then you, you have a different idea. I, I was in an instance where... Um, a good, probably one or two hundred people wanted to, were quite happy to go down this particular thing. Even the main speaker was in agreement with this thing. And I felt like standing up and saying, what are we doing? We're in the last day, we're on the spiritual convocation. And we, are we doing, anyone do this? You know, I was afraid to stand up and, and stand up against two hundred people. I was afraid to stand up against the high profile speaker and saying, what you're endorsing is wrong. But this is the kind of courage that God is looking for in people. Those who have too little courage to reprove wrong, or who through indolence or lack of interest make no earnest effort to purify the family or the church of God, are held accountable for the evil that may result from the neglect or duty. So God will hold me accountable for that day when I didn't stand up and say something. We are just as responsible for evils that we might have checked in others by exercise of parental or pastoral authority as if the acts had been our own. You understand that huge responsibility. And so often we can, you know, there's people that will go on and this is wrong and this is wrong. And you get tired. But you know, God may be speaking through them to, to say, look, I am crying, one crying in the wilderness. You are going down the wrong way. And though you've been a minority, sometimes we have to, you, you know, when you stand up and you speak strongly, you get less invitations sometimes. This happens. But what is God asking us to do? He's saying, we are called to make a difference. Read the writings of the pioneers. Why is this so important? The standard bearers who have fallen in death are to speak through the reprinting of their writings to bear their testimony as to what constitutes truth for this time. The history of the early experiences in the message will be a power... A what? A power to withstand the masterly ingenuity of Satan's deceptions. You see, today we have an Adventist Football League. But yet we're told that competitive sports are designed by Satan. As the papacy is getting stronger, as the deadly wound is getting healed, as the evangelicals are about to push the Sunday law upon us, God's great massive army about to get ready for a football match. What are we doing? How many of us got involved with the World Cup? We're on the brink of a catastrophe and God's people are asleep. But we're told that as we look at the history, it will be a power to withstand the master ingenuity of Satan's deceptions. Repeat the words of the pioneers in our work. Who knew what it cost to search for the truth as for hidden treasure, and who laboured to lay the foundation of our work. You know, brothers and sisters, the remnant church was not ready to embark on its work at that time. It had a membership of about 3,000, its ministers were paid, its work was organised, but there were still only a handful of people. But what a task they faced. They had the whole world before them. They felt time was short. Do we feel time is short? They must let the message fly. They gave all. Are we going to give all? Are we going to give the three angels' messages, brethren? Christ
Christ is about to come, are we going to partake of football matches? Are we going to even support and endorse competitive games? Are we going to give wrong counsel when it comes to courtship and marriage? Are we going to say, oh that's nice, aren't they lovey-dovey? Or are you going to be stern and say, did he ask your father's permission? How does he treat his mother? Each of us, elder brothers and elder sisters, we have responsibilities for our youth to be a role model, to encourage them, to be an example, to train them. God is calling and waiting for people. Are you going to be part of that people?